night. CBS 2's chief correspondent Jay Levine takes a look back at the life of Cardinal George. How in the world did a young Chicago polio victim, barred from a local seminary because of his disability, end up a prince of the church and one of the most influential Roman Catholic clerics in the world? If it's all right with you, I will say only that I am Francis, your neighbor. And he really was, a son of the city's northwest side, schooled at St. Pascal's in Portage Park, with an unusually early vision of his destiny, according to childhood friend Jerry Dranacherik. From the time he was a small boy, he was always going to be a priest. And not just any priest, but the first native son to lead the Chicago Archdiocese. Thank you for your good questions. Thank you. Coming home to where 15 years later, he would celebrate his 50th anniversary as a priest. For the Cardinal, it was a time for reflections. What's the best assignment you've ever had? Archbishop of Chicago, of course. What's the most challenging assignment you've ever had? Archbishop of Chicago, beyond any <laughs> doubt. Less than a year later, right after his successor was announced, the Cardinal attended his final meeting as Chicago's representative to the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, where an unexpected comment and the bishop's spontaneous reaction demonstrated their respect and affection for him. I have to tell you that not once but twice during our visit with our Holy Father, he spontaneously inquired about the health of Cardinal George. It's a touching moment, I mm. think, for those of us who have followed you and, and have followed this conference. Well, it was a touching moment for me, too. Perhaps uh, what I did as president uh, was helpful to them and to the church and the country. It was heartwarming and very well deserved, with gratitude for all that he has done. For his leadership of the Bishops' Conference and years as unofficial American voice at the Vatican, where his 1998 elevation to Cardinal gave him a seat at the papal table. I'll feel a little freer to tell him something. If I've got something to say, there's no point in wasting the Pope's time if you don't have something of importance to say. I find it hard to believe that you've ever not felt free to say something to somebody. <laughs> but not necessarily With to the Pope. With all due respect. Yeah. Not necessarily to the Pope, Jay. <laughs> but he did talk with John Paul and then Pope Benedict when he accompanied him on a papal visit to America about what the sex abuse scandal was doing to the church here. And he was devastated when one of his own priests, Father Daniel McCormick, slipped through the safety net. I am deeply sorry and deeply affected uh, because this is the first time on my watch as a bishop that anybody was abused. Some called him Francis the Corrector for his constant reminders of church teaching and tradition. Gay and lesbian Catholics were particularly incensed. Is the church driving away people? No. By not being, by not being more tolerant? You can't be tolerant of evil. Well, everybody's welcome, always. But everybody's welcome on God's conditions. Using sexual orientation in the same line as moral failings uh, does not make me feel welcome. Uh, talking about evil in the same context as talking about my life. His single-minded focus on principles of faith was disrupted only by physical failings, some from the weakness caused by childhood polio. A fall left him with a fractured hip. There were repeated back and knee problems, a bout with bladder cancer in 2006, and the discovery of new cancerous cells, requiring rounds of chemotherapy in the years immediately before and after he joined other cardinals for the election of Pope Francis. Despite his failing health, his mind remained sharp. And just hours after White Smoke announced a new pope, Cardinal George sat down with me in Rome and signaled before anyone else what kind of pope Francis would be. A universal man, especially with a heart for the poor, I was very concerned about that. Ironically, nearly the same age as the new pope, the return of his cancer had prompted him to ask the Vatican to speed up the search for his successor hoping to make it to retirement and thereby make history. I am looking forward to being the first Archbishop of Chicago to live long enough to retire. And he did, handing over the symbolic crozier to his successor. During his own last mass as Archbishop a few days earlier, he'd called his legacy the people of the Archdiocese. All of them, he told me. When there was opposition, you know, I always learned from it. And uh, even when I was convinced I was right and they were wrong, <laughs> which is often the case, uh, nonetheless, uh, I learned something about them and about myself. So I am very grateful and thank you uh, very, very much.
Jay Levine, CBS 2 News.